This is the 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge from Sunset Speedway. We bring you the Quick Wick 125. Hello and welcome to an abbreviated NASCAR Pinty Series season. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis will be patrolling the pits for us here today. Adam, it's been a long time. The feeling is a little different. There's no fans in the stands, but at least we're going to get a show. Dave, you're right. The people have put in the work. Sherry Putnam from NASCAR, Tony Spateri from Pinty's, and the track owners have got together to put this six-race season in front of us. Two races right here at Sunset Speedway on this third-mile oval. For the next two races, we go to a place we've never been, Flamborough Speedway, just outside of Hamilton, for another 225 lappers. And then things wind up at Canada's crown jewel, Jucasa Motor Speedway, the big 5 8 mile oval. And the teams have really had to thrash to get their equipment ready in order to be here for today, but they have done so. They are here and they're ready. But you mentioned it, short race distances, just 125 laps, so the drivers will have to get up on the wheel and be at it hard right from start to finish. They're gonna have to be up on the wheel, plus they line up today's starting grid by luck of the draw. So some of the fastest drivers here are gonna have to come through traffic in a very short time. You mentioned Tony Spateri from Pinty's, one of the great sponsors of the NASCAR Pinty series, but a new sponsor has emerged here for 2020. It is Quickwick who are sponsoring the Hot Lap Award, and one lucky driver is going to wear this beauty. How awesome is that? It's actually pretty heavy, too. <laughs> There's 13 drivers in the pits here today, and some old faces, some old familiar faces, but some new ones here today, too. Great to see Connor James back with the series racing today. Matthew Kingsbury has come out to race with us. One driver noticeable by his absence, Montreal area racer Alex Tagliani. He's in Daytona Beach, Florida, racing a NASCAR truck for Kyle Busch Motorsports, but his car is here. 16-year-old Trayton Lapsovich is going to be behind the wheel of the number 18. With that story, let's go to Todd Lewis. That's right, guys. He is one of the rising stars in Canadian motorsports. Trayton Lapsovich is the younger brother of 2016 NASCAR Pinty Series champion Caden Lapsovich. He's been running the APC Series the last three years, posting plenty of solid finishes. Taking over for Alex Tagliani this weekend told me the toughest thing about the car is getting used to how it handles in the corners, but now feels he's got a pretty good handle on it. It's a winning team. It's a fast driver. They are ones to watch today. Very excited to see that young man and how he performs here today in that 18 car. But before we go to commercial, it was a death that shocked the NASCAR Pinty Series and family and friends, the passing of Brandon White. Dave, Brandon White was such a positive force at the racetrack. He absolutely loved NASCAR and everything about a race day courageously battled with cancer. When he went into remission, he came out and raced with us and on the car, he was looking to gain awareness for early detection and how important that is. Unfortunately, Brandon White passed away just recently when the cancer came back, but I know for sure there is no place he would have rather been and no place he'd rather us be than right here at the racetrack today. So when we come back, we're going racing in honor of Brandon White. The Quick Wick 125 from Sunset Speedway is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. And by Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. Great looking day for a race. The cars are fired. The pace truck is rolled away, Dave. Finally, it's time to go racing. And let's take a look at the Quick Wick starting lineup. DJ Kennington on the front row. He'll start pole alongside Jason White. Jason Hathaway in the three, and Donald Teach make up row number two. Back to the third row, Dexter Stacy in the 92, and Connor James in the number eight Ford. Row number four, Trayton Lapsovich behind the wheel of the number 18, alongside our most recent winner, Brad Taylor in the 33. Then we look back to row number five. That's where we find Larry Jackson in the 98. LP Dumoulin drives the 47. And row number six has Matthew Kingsbury in the 75. Anthony Simone in the one. 
and back to row number seven starting all by himself the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Dave you see oil dry around the racetrack they're trying to get that cleared up before we can go green. And that was from the one of Anthony Simone went around half the track leaking some gear oil so they got that cleaned up as best they can. Let's take a look at the E3 spark plugs race analysis. 125 laps is the distance in this sprint race. The most recent winner, we go back to 2016 and Alex Tagliani. One team looking to win here today and Todd's in their pits. There is a new combination to watch this year. Donald Teach has moved over to White Motorsports Incorporated. Dave White, the championship crew chief for Andrew Ranger a year ago, has gone on his own and he's brought in Donald Teach as his driver. Brand new car, brand new equipment. They are very fast, quickest in practice. They will be fast during the races today. Well, that's right, Todd. As you mentioned, a brand new car. It turned some laps in testing earlier on. They were very happy with that setup. Keep an eye on that 80 team because Donald T.G. is so hungry for a win in this series. He's got something to prove this year, that's for sure, Dave. And look, there's still some oil dry on the track. This could be an exciting first few laps. Yeah, you can see the dust being kicked up as the drivers pair up two by two, coming to the green. And we are underway in the Quick Wick 125. for DJ Kennington, Jason White, squeezing Donald Teej up into the outside wall. Teej backed out of it. Doesn't look like any damage to either car. Saw contact with the 18 of Trayton Lapsovich as well between the 80 and the 18, but all cars carry on. Battle for third spot. Now, actually, no, Teej is battling for third. Up underneath the 28 of Jason White. New race leader is the three of Jason Hathaway. Hathaway wastes no time getting to the front on the inside. Let's have a look at that start again wow oh there was contact in the wall you could see Teach's hood buckle as Dexter Stacy having some handling woes in the 92 and we have a look at Trayton Lasovich who is already up to fifth Kennington trying to hold on to the outside that Castro edge dodge the 17 the only one so far in the outside groove so we ride on board with Kennington quickly now we flip back to the quick quick number 18 of Trayton Lapsovich. Look at this youngster go. Visor wide open, that's a different look, but the focus in his eyes. We make a big deal about Trayton being 16 years old. He's probably got as many laps on this Sunset Speedway configuration as anybody in the field. Yeah, he's raced anything from a late model to a super stock, and we've got a battle heating up for the lead as well. Donald Teach, we talked about how fast that car was, and look at him just able to stretch his legs a little bit and now close up to the back bumper of the Kubota Chevy, the three of Jason Hathaway. You listen to that hesitation, but he's really able to jump on the throttle. Clear by two, clear by two. Now he's not willing yet to put a bumper on the three car. Everybody playing nice early. Right at your bumper, right inside, just the 28 Hathaway spotter Jeff Gutler giving him some instructions, saying the 80's up the inside. Now Jason doesn't need Jeff to tell him where he's at. He can see right out that driver's window. Yeah, he's going to let Teach go. He knows that the 80 is a little bit faster right now, so Hathaway's going to slot into second. But look at the 28, the powder excavating number 28 of Jason White. Up in third and holding his own. He's got a good run going on earlier. Great run so far as we look at the TCB Trailer 33 contact between Brett Taylor and young Connor James in the SSG Gloves number eight. Connor James, the former champion, actually a recent champion in the Ontario Sportsman Series, a chassis similar to what they run here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Not quite the same, not as much tire, not as much horsepower, but at least he gets the handling idea. Yeah, they are a similar chassis for sure as Trayton Lapsovich working the inside of Jason White. That's a battle for the third spot. We talked about Trayton Lapsovich getting some laps here at Sunset Speedway. He was the 2015 track champion at just 11 years old in the super stock division here or the mini stock division, I should say. And he will know as well as anybody, it is very hard to complete a pass at sunset. This might be the easiest place we go to begin a pass to get your nose inside. Very, very hard to complete it. And you can see how hard he's working the throttle to try to get a run, but the car on the outside just gets a great launch off the banking on the high side, makes it really challenging for the car on the bottom.
only twice as the NASCAR Pinty Series visited Sunset Speedway in the past. Both races won by Alex Tagliani, who normally drives that Rona number 18, currently being steered by Trayton Lapsovich. But if you remember back to 2015, Tagliani won this race by a full lap. Yeah, that, he spanked the field that day. That was something to watch as Kevin Lacroix is up the inside of Brett Taylor. Remember, Lacroix started dead last in this field, and now he's halfway through in that seventh spot. Brett Taylor came in brimming with optimism in that TCB trailers number 33. Very hopeful to put on a good show for his brand new sponsor for this year. He's running out of the EHR camp, the Ed Hackinson Racing Camp, so he's got good equipment underneath him, and he's looking forward to getting his second Pinty Series win. Remember, he surprised a lot of people at Jucasa last year. And he earned that win. That was a great battle he had with Jason Hathaway. And we look at that car from the bumper cam of Kevin Lacroix. A little bit evil right now for Brett Taylor. Not a lot of practice for these teams here today, so drivers still figuring out what they have as we're in the early stages here at the Quick Wick 125. We'll be back with more from Sunset Speedway. Welcome back to race number one of the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge here on TSN. We're at Sunset Speedway, a facility that opened back in 1968. Hey, Jason Hathaway trying to keep Donald Tej's rearview mirror occupied there. He had a look to the inside as they go around the dark horse trailers by Jim Bray, number 98. That's Larry Jackson behind the wheel of the 98 machine this weekend. Good to see Larry out once again. He's Tucks down out of the way of the leaders as they go by. Look at this gaggle of race cars. And that is all for position as the battle heats up at the front too. Hathaway takes a peek underneath the Teach number 80 and now moves alongside a drag oh. race down the back straight. It won't last long though, Teach backs out. Uh, Teach shouldn't back out of that. He got, he got bumped up out of that groove. He had to lift to avoid the wall. Same song, different verse. It was Jason White on the opening lap. <laughs> That's Jason true. Hathaway this time. He's going to be pretty tired of that backstretch wall by the end of this one. And very familiar with it. So he was able to get into the second spot without Trayton Lasovich getting in there, getting in underneath him, sorry. But you can see the distance back from third. There is your fourth place driver, the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Clear by one, clear by one. We ride on board with Lacroix. The, the progression of the onto the throttle from these in cars, you really start to notice the finesse the driver has to use. You can't just mash the gas. You have to slowly roll into it, especially when you're on the inside of another car. And that is one thing that the teams were focusing on in practice. If you're listening on the, the scanner, the spotters, the crew chiefs were trying to coach their drivers through the turns, finding out where's a good turn in point, where's a good place to get back on the gas, trying to find that perfect groove because it is difficult to find here at Sunset. And all the drivers I watched, Trayton Lapsovich looked the most comfortable in practice, getting right around the yellow line on the bottom. I mean, Kevin Lacroix is looking pretty good too in a brand new McCall car put together by Don Thompson Jr. Yeah, he's had a lot of ground to make up as we see a battle for seventh spot between DJ Kennington, who started this race on pole, has slid back just a little bit, now in a battle there with Brett Taylor. Yeah, a little surprised to see DJ sliding back the way he has. He's actually run some races this year in a late model. He's already been to victory lane, so it's been a, it's been a busy season, probably not by his standards, but Kennington definitely has no rust. He's up on the outside, and he seems to be fighting a loose race car at this point. You saw the back end wiggle just a little bit through one and two. Two was a little bit better in three and four. And that time stuck, and there you can see he gets the drive off and able to stay out in front of the TCB trailers, number 33, Brett Taylor. Right behind them, Connor James in that red number eight, finally having a good run in the ninth position, rounding out the top 10, Matthew Kingsbury, a driver from Montreal. Nice to see him make it back out again. Now we should mention too that Anthony Simone has pulled his car, the number one Silverline Tools Dodge into the infield. So problems, you remember that one was uh, leaking some fluid on the pace lap, so they pulled it into the infield to get a good check. 
Brett Taylor still trying on the inside of DJ Kennington. You can even see how hard he's working. You see the wheels turning left, right. DJ smooth as can be up on the outside, and Brett Taylor working for all he's worth on the bottom. Saw a quick puff of smoke. I think that was from the 28 of Jason White. And now look, this is for second spot. You have the veteran Tej and the rookie, Trayton Lapsovich, and the leader is able to get away just a little bit. So now it looks like Hathaway has about a five or six car length lead over that battle for second. Poor Dexter Stacy, that 92 Bullies truck stop machine. Look at it, he's got the wheels turned hard to the left. That thing just won't turn. You very rarely see smoke off the right front tire going through a corner, but we're seeing it from Stacy. Yeah, and he's trying to back up the turns a little bit, slow it down to make a turn. It just doesn't want to. He's a veteran of the NASCAR PT Series. As you saw there, he has 48 career starts, so he knows what he's doing. He's, of course, raced in the um, Xfinity Series as well down in the U.S., so uh, just some trouble here today. Wow, this is some traffic. Four-car battle for position as they try to put a lap on Larry Jackson in the 98. Three wide through the corner. Finally, Brett Taylor gets his opening. Three wide down the backstretch, too, as T Kennington and the eight of James are side by side. They went around Jackson. It's a battle for eighth position. Kennington has it, but James wants it. And there's more traffic coming as they close in on Dexter Stacy. Now Kennington to the outside of Jason White, down into three and four. Oh, and White got a little crossways right up into the path of the SSG gloves, eight of Connor James. You see some damage to the left front fender of that Ford Fusion. But everybody stayed straight, we stayed green. 50 laps in to the quick, quick 125. That'll give 75 laps to go. Jason Hathaway continues to extend his advantage. Over two seconds now is the lead over Donald Teach. James ducks underneath the 28, continuing that battle for seventh position. Underneath, Jason White. White from Sun Peaks, British Columbia. Seems to be holding on up in the outside group, but that car is pushing just a little bit. Yeah, that's a pretty serious push for Jason White. Not as bad as Dexter Stacy in the 92, but still a push nonetheless. So running down your top three, Hathaway is out in front by, you mentioned it, over two seconds. There is your second place runner in the TJ Automotive Group, the number 80, Donald Teach, and Trayton Lapsovich in the 18 as the crew looks on. Quite the brain power there. Tyler Case was caught Steckley right beside him. That's who you want for your 16-year-old driver, a couple of championship-winning crew chiefs. Welcome back to Sunset Speedway in Innisfil, Ontario. We're watching the NASCAR Pimpty Series, the Fan Cave Challenge, round one of six, Dave, and there is a traffic jam at a turn number two. Trayton Lapsovich on the lead lap up top as he's trying to make his way around Teach. So it's a battle between drivers a lap down and on the lead lap. A little look from the onboard cameras here as they try to negotiate this traffic. None of these cars look to be completely comfortable right now, but here's one, Dave, that's been on the march forward. Yeah, LP Dumoulin has been very, very good. And he's caught the drivers in second and third as we hit the halfway mark. But the 28 of Jason White is fighting tooth and nail to remain ahead of this group and remain the first car lap down. These cars are a handful. You see three or four different grooves being used out here. There's just not enough real estate for all these drivers. One driver has started up front, struggling a little bit. More on that is taught. Rick Bernard is the new crew chief for DJ Kennington this year. He drew the great starting spot, but you guys have been struggling with this car all day. Yeah, we're struggling a bit right now. Uh, tight on entry a little bit, but we'll make some adjustments here, and uh, hopefully we're better here. Um, we're hoping with the long run it'll get a little better also, so we'll see what happens. One of the problems with the long run is if the car's not working the way you want it to, and someone like Jason Hathaway's is, 
it can put you a lap down, and that's what's just happened to DJ Kennington. So even if his car's getting better, it's not quite as good as the Hathaway number three as he also puts a lap on Connor James. Yeah, Hathaway is cutting through this field like a hot knife into a snowbank as he continues to put drivers a lap down, but still Teach is struggling to get by the 28 of Jason White as the 47 of LP Dumoulin has managed to get around the 18 of Treaton Lapsovich and up into third as we ride on board with your fifth place driver. The bumper to bumper, Total Lubricants, number 74 of Kevin Laquad. He won't stay in fifth for very much longer. No, Lacroix with a good run on the inside. Lapsovich able to hang on on the high side, but Kevin Lacroix has done as good a job as anybody today completing his passes. Good on Trayton Lapsovich. He's not intimidated. You saw the 74 brush up alongside the 18 of Lapsovich as we ride on board. And something about his grip on the steering wheel is maybe just that Lapsovich a little bit smaller, but that wheel looks enormous when you put the camera on it. It does as Teach finally gets around the 28 and look at the 47 move to the inside. Contact in this battle for a second. The WeatherTech Dodge moves through to second spot. LP Dumoulin didn't want to wait any longer to make his move with this long a green flag run contact between Teach and Kevin Lacroix coming out of four. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a target as they scrub down the back stretch together smoke and now the 28 goes around the bumper cover hanging off the back of that Dodge Challenger and caution flag will fly here on lap 74. Jason White was the victim of circumstance that was not his accident action going on ahead of him and he was just the innocent bystander and now you see the rear bumper cover all but ripped off let's have another look at this they come out of turn number two Absolutely bouncing off each other, and I believe Teach checked up. Jason White couldn't get checked up quick enough. Trey Lapsovich really couldn't get checked <laughs> up quick enough. Got into the back end. Let's have a look from here. Yeah, that was about the side. Just a racing deal. Everybody racing for the same real estate. Yeah, and that all started with that scrub between the 80 and the 74 coming off of turn two and down into the pits is Jason White. There is some significant body damage to that 28 machine. The crew goes over the wall to start clearing away that fiberglass. They're going to secure some of that fiberglass on the left rear. Saw is coming out now to cut away those pieces. They'll make sure it's all buttoned up for Jason White to send him back out. Aerodynamics are not going to slow that car down at all. How much is slowing this car down? Your race leader, the three of Jason Hathaway. Take a short break and be back on TSN. Welcome back to race number one, the Pinty's Fan King Challenge. It's the Quick Wick 125 from Sunset Speedway just outside of Barrie, Ontario. Under caution here in this one is Dexter Stacy in the Bullies Truck Stop number 92 makes his way down pit lane. They are not being shy with adjustments made on that 92 car. Lots of rounds. And we ride on board with Larry Jackson and the Dark Horse Trailers by Jim Bray, number 98. And Adam, they're racing with a heavy heart this weekend. Yeah, sad times for sure. Brian Barton, someone he traveled up and down the road with for a long time, racing modifieds together, recently passed away. So terrible news for from the Oakville area where they raced out of. But yeah, they ran NASCAR style modifieds for a lot of years, had a lot of fun together. All clear here. No pressure. Clear by four. To Green as Hathaway opens up a huge gap early on. Look at the gaggle of race cars midway through, though. We're three wide for a short period of time. Lapsovich slides up into second. Teach up on the outside is crooked and he goes around. In turn one, cautions breed cautions, and we've got another one. Yeah, something seems strange there with Teej, and look at the black marks into the corner. Some flat-spotted general tires on that number 80. He gets spun around in the right direction before going a lap down, so that's good news for Donald Teej. Let's have a look at this. Right on board with the 80. I don't know if it means anything, but did you hear the brakes yeah. squealing on the on the onboard? That was just an unusual 
and he seemed to drive in far. He did make contact with the back end of the 18 of Trayton Lapsovich before looping it in turn number one, and Teach will find his way down to pit lane. Donald Teach along mid row. They are making a handling adjustment to the left rear, checking the tire pressures. They're also looking to see if there's maybe some brake issues. They want to make sure that none of the lines have broken loose. That car snapped around really quickly on track. You see one of the crewmen actually got in the car with a ratchet turning on the back end of that car, making some adjustments. That's a wholesale adjustment. No kidding, they're not being shy with the attempts they're taking on these cars. So Donald T is going to have to restart fairly deep, but time and time again, we've seen anything can happen in these races. 125 laps is a long time. And before we get back to green, we're just about to do that. But before we do, we'd like to take our hats off and thank a number of people who have made this season possible. A lot of sponsors have come together, sponsoring race cars so we can get a 2020 season together. Yeah, a lot of support in what's been a terribly difficult season. Putting the cars on the racetrack, and those are some of the sponsors that have helped get it done. We're going to try to get it done right here, Dave. This is a Saturday night special now. 35 laps remain in the Quick Quick 125. And did you see what Hathaway did? He drove the youngster up the racetrack, coming back to green. He got a great jump, though, the three of Hathaway back into the lead. Trayton Lapsovich trying to give chase on that 18 behind him, the two most aggressive drivers from this event. LP Dumoulin in the 47, Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Kevin Lacroix did make a little contact with the 18 of Lapsovich moving up into third spot. Remember, he started last in this field. He's now up into third as the laps tick off now to the inside looking for second. Lapsovich keeps him pinned down to the inside. That's the one thing you can try to do from the outside to better your chances. But we've seen throughout this race that the driver on the inside after a few laps gets tired of it, gives a nudge to the car on the outside and away <laughs> they go. And there you can see Lacroix, a very good handling race car. And as many cars as he's had to pass here today, that car is still relatively clean. Not too many tire marks on it. Can't say the same for the right side where he made the contact with the 80 of Donald Teach, but for the nose, it's pretty clean. Short track racing, baby. You mentioned it off the top, though, Adam, how hot a day it is here today at Sunset Speed. When you saw the look on Trayton Lapsovich's face, uh, Lapsovich's face, he is hot Still inside there. that race Still car. It's sweltering. Still there. Vol Vol Side by side. Still there. Still there. I wish I knew what Still that there. spotter just said. Still there. <laughs> there. Side by side. I couldn't understand, but. Obviously door, telling them they're door, still side door, by side, and all that driver there. wants to hear is still clear. There. He's I'm not going to hear it yet. Door, door, quarter, 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 door, door, door. And you can hear the spotter telling him exactly where Lapsovich is on the outside. He's up to the quarter, he's up to the door. Now he's back to the quarter as Lacroix makes contacts and slams the door right across the nose of the Quick Quick 18. And Trayton Lasevich gives him the bumper. He wants to return the favor there. So Trayton Lasevich, welcome to the NASCAR Pinty <laughs> Series. It's a very physical style of racing. And now after trying to give the bumper to Lacroix a little bit, LP Dumoulin going to drive to the inside for position. Position number three for the two-time series champion in the WeatherTech Dodge as Lapsovich makes a little contact and look who's battled his way back up in the TCB Trailers 33, Brett Taylor, all the way from out west and having a great run here outside of Barrie. He'll drive to the inside of Trayton Lapsovich down into turns one and two. Should mention to you, race a little. Oh, we've got contact. As Taylor and Lapsovich get together, hard on the brakes was the driver of the 18, gathers it back up. We stay green with just under now 24 laps to go. Looks like Lapsovich got loose up on the outside. 
He had his hands full of steering wheel right there, that's for sure. Donald Teach, remember he had to start, or restart, I should say, at the back of this pack. He's now battled his way back up inside the top 10. He's sitting sixth right now behind the 18 of Lapsovich. And he really sails that car down into the corners. It'll be 20 laps to go next time. This race is flying by. Should mention too, Jason Hathaway still comfortably out in front. Kevin Lacroix sitting in second. LP Dumoulin in third. You can find your favorite driver on the ticker across the top of the screen as we go side by side. has used him up coming off the corner, squeezed him into the wall. Connor James has him just yet as they battle side by side for that sixth spot. James trying to make the move as they chase the 80 of Donald Teach. Lapsovich, he's really worked hard up on that outside. You can see those general tires are starting to get a little bit tired, not sticking as well as they did early in this run. And the 47 now making a battle for second spot with Kevin Lacroix, the bumper to bumper Total Dodge Challenger. Dumoulin on the bottom, Lacroix up top. And LP has had a lot of speed. He's really able to get to the back to the throttle early in that 47, but Kevin Lacroix is keeping him honest for the outside groove. One of those drivers who's quietly confident coming into any track he races at, he is LP Dumoulin. If you talk to him before the race, you ask him, how good's the car? He's like, we're good, we're ready to go. And he's always super confident. He's showing just how good he is. His caution flies once again. Yeah, yellow flag is out. I believe debris on the racetrack that Kevin Lacroix just straddled just between turn four and the start finish line. Now you can see it flopping around in the breeze. There it is there, a good shot of the debris on the front straightaway. So the cleanup crew will head out and take care of that as we bunch the field once again, but a driver making a pit stop. That's the 18 of Trayton Lapsovich. So we'll hit that pit road speed limit and head down to his stall right on the entrance of turn number one. They are checking the right front of that 18 car and doing a handling adjustment. There was a little contact between he and the 33 as they were passing, and that handling went away pretty quickly on the 18. You know, 125 laps, these are a heavier stock car than Trayton Lapsovich is used to running. So that it would stand to reason the fall off is gonna be sharper than it is in the late model that he's used to racing, Dave. Well, we'll see how bad that fall off is or if he can make it work for the stretch run. We're into the final throws here of the Quick Quick 125. Everybody is chasing the three of Jason Hathaway. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge. One to go, we're gonna go back to green. Now we've got a real sprint to the finish, Dave. We call this a sprint from the start. This is a sprint. Driver getting back on the lead lap as the free pass car is the 17 of DJ Kennington. But Jason Hathaway has been the class of the field for the most part here today. He has one podium finish here at Sunset Speedway. He was a runner up to Alex Tagliani and he finished a full lap back of Tagliani that year. So he's looking to take a step further up on the podium here today. He's been very, very good today, but Kevin Lacroix and LP Dumoulin have been great in traffic. Let's see what they can do with Hathaway as he fires out of turn four. Lacroix will try to hold on the outside, in through one and two, finds a hole and ducks behind the number three of Jason Hathaway. So it's a Chevrolet, a Dodge, and a Dodge as Dumoulin pulls up into third. These are the three best cars on the racetrack right now, but there's a gaggle behind them as Teach goes around with a bit of contact from Matthew Kingsbury in the 75. He'll try to refire from the inside of one and two. Caution laps count, so you want to get going as quickly as possible so as not to go a lap down, and Teach will do that. Getting going just ahead of the leaders. Seven laps to go now in the Quick Quick 125. Have another look at what happened. 
Yeah, Teach was coming down the racetrack. I don't think Kingsbury could have got much lower on the track into turn number one. Let's have a look overhead. Deep in the field, they're three wide there. I don't know if Teach even realized Kingsbury was down there. Yeah, Teach had a driver up to the outside as well, so I think he probably thought he was clear. Maybe a miscommunication with the spotter on that one as we get set for one to go. The lights will go off on the Dodge Ram pace truck, this time by Larry Jackson getting one lap back. This is where the crowd would be on their feet if only there were spectators in the grandstands. But boy, oh boy, we're in for an exciting finish here. Four laps to go, and yes, this will decide it. Here are the Quick Quick 125. Tension has been rising in the last 20 laps or so because you have Kevin Lacroix alongside Hathaway for these restarts. You've got a hungry 47 of LP Dumoulin just in behind. Will it be Brett Taylor restarting in fourth? Green flag waves and we're back underway. Once again, Kevin Lacroix able to get right behind Hathaway, and that's kind of a more challenging position. Contact between the 74 and the 3. Trouble for Connor Teach. Look at the front stretch. The leader. the leader goes around off the nose, a 360, and he keeps going. Caution will fly as the 33 of Taylor goes around in turn one. So you've got the 8 in turn four who went around the 3 car on the front straightaway and kept going. And then the 33 brings out the caution as well. So as we have a look, let's look at the aid of Connor James. Matthew Kingsbury giving him a couple of pushes. He goes around at the same time. Kevin Lacroix, and they were well off the corner. But Lacroix into the left rear corner of Hathaway turns him just before the start finish line. Beautiful job by Hathaway. There is the donut the, for Hathaway as he does the spin and grabs the gear, keeps on going, riding on board Hathaway. That was a pretty slick maneuver. I mean, that's I'm pretty proud of Jason Hathaway for what he was able to do there. And he's still in second spot. Have another look from the overhead. You're right, they were well off the turn when that one happened. It was interesting to see his head, though. He was looking for walls. Which one am I going to hit? And then he didn't hit any of them. So what I want to know is what are they going to do with the race order? It looks like they're giving Hathaway his spot back. Well, he didn't draw the caution. It doesn't matter. There was matter. two you, other cars that spun. You still have to maintain a reasonable caution speed. Wasn't that a reasonable caution speed? He maintained second spot. Yeah, and they're not putting him in second. They're putting him first. Have a look at his crew. <laughs> Unbelievable. But Hathaway will go back to the top spot for this restart. We've already completed 128 laps. So we are into NASCAR overtime. It'll be a green-white checker here to, sell, or to settle it in the Quick Quick 125. Coming off of four, looking for green this time. Side by side, that's the best start Kevin Lacroix had from the outside. They remain side by side through one and two. Now Hathaway edges out in front. No fireworks through one and two as they head through three and four. The battles for second spot as the white flag Flies, you can see the 47 of Dumoulin upstairs, and they make contact in one and two. Hathaway up the racetrack, but he got a great run down the back stretch. Tries to close the door, he goes around. And more contact as the 47 spun around the 74, and it looks like Dumoulin's gonna take the win. Wow. LP Dumoulin drives through the smoke for the win. Trayton Lapsovich to second. Jason Hathaway still trying to get the car pointed in the right direction. And you can see in the background, there is all sorts of commotion in the pits. Let's have another look. Lacroix had moved Hathaway up. Hathaway goes back, tries to close the door. But look at Dumoulin fly into that corner. Well, it looks like Lacroix did the same thing. He wanted to protect the inside, and Dumoulin was already there. There he sees up the track. Dumoulin's right there, nowhere to go. Jumps on the gas, almost runs the 18 up to the wall or into the wall, and then crosses the line first. Wow, what a finish. What a finish. What a race. No right front fender of the Dumoulin 47. What a way to kick off 2020. When we return, we'll talk to the 47 in victory lane. 
For the 10th time in his career, L.P. Dumoulin will jump out of the 47, a winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Let's go down to a socially distanced victory lane. Can't see the smile because of the face mask, but L.P. Dumoulin is a winner here at Sunset Speedway in a wild last lap. Coming out of corner four, he maneuvers his way forward and claims the victory here at Sunset Speedway. L.P. Dumoulin will come down and celebrate what a victory. LP, that was an amazing last lap. How did you find your way to the front? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I saw it coming from the, 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 um, the start prior to that, and then uh, I felt like some, some good stuff was going to happen, and then um, all my guys did really well. My spotter did really well on making sure I was on top of my stuff. And Man, I wonder if Ben Marcar was hooked up tonight. Really good for, looking forward to the next race. Uh, and then uh, it's been awesome. Thanks to my fans, thanks to my family, everybody, my engine guys. There's a couple guys up there. We lost one lately. Brendan, man. Cheers. Started 10th, finishes first at sunset, LP Dumoulin. Woo! Believe it or not, four of his last five wins have come on ovals in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Not by, bad for a guy who was once considered a road course specialist. How about DJ Kennington fourth? Matthew Kingsbury in the top five. Good run for him. Larry Jackson, seventh spot here today. Dexter Stacy struggled to an 11th place with an ill-handling race car. He'll get things sorted for the rest of the season. Let's go down to second place. Trayton, that was an eventful first race. You ran up near the front, really challenging. Car seemed to slip back a little bit, though. Tell us about your first experience. Yeah, uh, the car was really good. Um, at the start, I was trying to save, but um, once I got behind the 80 car, I, I, I think I realized I was faster than him at that point, but I, I tried too hard to get around him, and then I just ended up using up my stuff there. Terrific first effort, though, with a podium finish in race number one. Thank you. And of course, as we do every year, we are counting points in the 2020 Binti's Fan Cave Challenge. And LP Dumoulin, your early season leader, just five points up on Trayton Lapsovich. It might only be after the first race, but it still means something to be leading the championship points. Let's go to our third place finisher. Brett Taylor with another solid result, this time in the 33 car. Third place in this race. That was a wild last lap. Oh, man. I'm still trying to catch my breath right now. It was, and, and tell me about how you managed to move through the field to, to claim such a solid result. Well, you know, really I just had to uh, try to look as far ahead as I can. All I saw were cars spinning, parts flying everywhere, and I was just trying to anticipate where everybody's gonna go. And I uh, lucked out and made it through it, I guess. <laughs> Brett Taylor comes up with a podium result. Not so fortunate for Jason Hathaway, who looked to be on his way to victory. Jason, take us through what happened on that last lap. Ah, uh, yeah. Lacroix got into me there a few times, and uh, I thought maybe he stayed on the outside of me. We could have raced it out a little bit, but he got in behind me there and hit me. Spun me once and caused a caution. Then he spun me, hit, hit me again, and uh, hit me two or three more times. And uh, I don't know, wrecked us both, I guess. I don't know where he finished. So. Um, kind of not the finish we wanted after leading most laps and uh, kind of check it out with it there two or three times. So it's, uh, that's racing. That's the way it goes. We'll uh, get geared up and have at her again. Lots of action here at Sunset Speedway. A very mature Jason Hathaway. It, you know, you, you wonder what's going on under the mask behind the sunglasses. He could not have been happy. Today's race has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Kubota, for Earth, for life, there's a Kubota for every job. By Total Quartz Engine Oils. And by QuickWick, the world's best fire starters. Go to quickwick.com for your NASCAR discount code. It's been 10 months since the NASCAR Pinty Series competed on track, and Dave, it only took about 40 minutes for tempers to flare. I mean, they were on it. It was a little weird with no fans in the stands, but once these cars started rolling, it didn't take long for the action to heat up on track. 125 laps here at Sunset Speedway. There was beating and banging. There was some masterful driving, and there was lots of action. 
How great is it we're able to bring this action? Six races will make up the season, but obviously the drivers are into it, the teams are into it. You can't take the passion away from a, from a bunch of racers like this. Big congratulations to the winner here today, LP Dubele, as he crossed the finish line first for the first time in 2020. Heck, a big congratulations to everyone who finished today. From all of us here at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you for race two from Sunset Speedway.